Zach have the right move? No, I haven't woken yes, up in the mood at all. No, I have. You are the one that's turned around and said, you're bloody tired. Why are you tired? Because you stayed out the night before last. You went out last night bloody drinking. That is why you're tired. Mum, it's run out. Mum thinks I'm a druggie. My dad thinks I'm a waster, thinks I'm going to get pregnant. What do you mean abuse my body? The drugs and the drink, Bex. You don't even know? No, of course we don't even know. We've tried absolutely everything with Bex. All different kinds of grounding, punishing, you name it, we've done it. I just don't like him. What? Are you home tonight? I don't know. Bex and boys, she's a dog on each. Now my head is so nice. Love you. I have loads of boy mates. I shag most of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have a bit of a drink. Where's the other bottle? Pick, pick her up, put her in a convent, and she'd be buggered, wouldn't she? To her parents' dismay, her partying lost Bex her place at college and her job at McDonald's. I can't be bothered to get up and go to work or go to college. She's completely and utterly lost. She is an alien. Yeah, Cheslin spends a lot of time doing his uh, every little herd has got to be in the right place. I might look like a twat, but at least I'm up here, you know what I mean? Cheslin came out to his mum when he was 13. It don't bother me in being gay at all. But he's behaving like a turd. <laughs> Cheslin enjoys shocking people with his exploits. We all came back here and we got really drunk and we ended up having sex with each other and we filmed it on um, my camera on my karaoke machine. <laughs> Cheston's mum, Sylvia, is seriously ill with heart disease, but that doesn't stop him from treating her like a personal servant. Put it on. Um, Three years ago, I had a heart attack. I couldn't um, get stressed, so I, I let things go. <laughs> Instead of getting stressed and shouting, I started to learn things slide a bit and that I think that's why I know he thinks he can do as he pleases and he don't have to help out or, or do anything. I wouldn't say I boss my mum around but I do like getting my own wear. I sometimes wash up if my mum pays me and then I sometimes get paid for washing up and don't do it. He don't do anything. Very lazy. <laughs> Chesden has no contact with his dad who left before he was born. I don't really think I need a dad, because, I mean, I've got my mum, and that's all I need, really. It's like, you, you don't miss what you've never had. Careful you don't ruin that shirt. Both families have decided to send their troubled teens away to spend eight days in the American South with parents who demand obedience. Yay. I will be a... Love you. Bye, Bex. With a bit of luck, she'll come back. Our old Bex. Maybe, yeah. And we get on with our lives. I'd like Cheston to learn something from this experience and... I'm hoping that he's going to learn for it's showing me more respect. Hey, hey you alright? You alright? Right? Yeah, you? Yeah. I'm God. I'm Ches. I'm Bex. The British teens will be flying 4,200 miles to Atlanta, Georgia. Many of the city's population are devout Christians. Wanda is a school administrator, and David is a Baptist preacher. What is wrong with you, mommy? When I say no, I mean no. The Kimbros believe in the divine right of parents to chastise their children. One of the things that's really important to us is God. It's important for us to be able to instill that in our children. And um, secondly, for our children to walk in obedience. Obedience to God, first and foremost, and obedient to us as their parents. Wanda Kimbrough demands that her children treat her like a queen. Make sure you get the, all of the dishes washed and that they're washed well. I'm not just the queen, I'm the homework queen. Do not come back until you have checked your answers. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. I think the one of the worst things our kids can do is to lie to us. We don't believe in smoking, we don't believe in drinking, we don't believe in using profanity, and just things of that nature that so many people in society think are no big deal. They are a big deal to us. 
For the next eight days, Chesden and Bex will have their lives dictated by the Kimbrough's strict moral code. After their nine-hour flight to Atlanta, it's already clear that Chesden and Bex have plenty in common. A lot of people straight in the first place. So the, the kids don't end up like us. <laughs> <laughs> But everybody knows everyone's business around there. Yeah. It's like desperate outspies. Oh, God, they're, they're going to be so warped, aren't they? They're going to be typical Yanks. <laughs> oh, that is so, so disgusting. I'm so sorry. You, you know, you can fart all you want, but when people burp, it actually makes me heave. I need a cigarette. I do. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Okay. I'm Chaz. Chad. I'm Desire. Hello. David. Hello. Hi, I'm David. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, I'm Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a secret here? Excuse me? Can we have a secret here? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we've been do in the car for so no. long. <laughs> really? Do both of you, do you smoke? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we don't do cigarettes. No, we don't, we don't do, do any cigarettes. smoking at all. On the ground. I'll get you some, some gum. It's only, Chef. <laughs> it's only, only Chef, I promise Chef, you. can you save me on that, please? I need a lighter. I won't one. chase you. <laughs> I won't chase you, but you're gonna need more than this rain to put out the fire if you like that cigarette. You wanna start this trip being defiant? No! Put it out. You're not getting off to a good start with the Kimbros. Oh. That would be your last cigarette. Your last cigarette. That's an empty pot, by the way. Okay, and if you got more, they're gonna be empty by the time you leave. That's what we do in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. The teens have made an immediate impression on the Kimbro boys. <laughs> and I thought my mom, I could tell she was trying to restrain her anger because if, if that was anybody else, she would have probably killed them. I probably would get a whooping or probably get kicked out. I probably have to go find somewhere to live, probably. This is the room of angels. So when you walked in the door, there was an angel assigned to you. And when you walked across the threshold, you became a part of our family. Wanda is apparently not aware that she has ever met an openly gay person. I'm a pretty boy. A, pr a, pretty, a, pretty, boy? a pretty boy. A pretty boy. A pretty boy. A boy that's pretty. <laughs> a boy that's pretty. A pretty boy. Yeah. Well, in America, pretty boy may mean something slightly different. <laughs> than it does in the UK. Right. What does pretty boy mean in America? Pretty boy in America means that, um... There we go. <laughs> pretty boy means that you are... Guy. A homosexual. Uh, to put it bluntly. Yeah, I would am. That, would that be you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to, like, bomb in your house or anything. Oh, we're not concerned about that. <laughs> oh, no, no. We're not concerned about that. We're not concerned about you doing anything that you don't have permission to do. All right. So they're either acting or they are actually insane. Like, no one it can actually be like that. I just don't believe it. Well, they're just not all there. Let's just tell it they're just, like, not the full ticket at all. Let me get the two of you to have a seat over here for me and, um... Well, on this table? Yeah, at that table. The no. formal table for the no, formal... Sorry. For the formal... The Kimbros call a meeting. Every civilized society, there are rules um, for which we are to conduct ourselves. So that's what this meeting is all about. So Wanda and David want to make their expectations as clear as possible. We're going to give you the home rules contract for the Kimbro family. You don't have to yes, commit anything yes, to memory. Sir. There is a consequence for every action, so we want you to think before, before you, you act. act. So Education you is extremely important in the Kimbro home you are expected to maintain no less than a B-plus average in every class. Profanity is used by people with limited vocabularies and people with the inability to intelligently express their displeasure. The Kimbrough family is highly intelligent and only uses language that illustrates our intelligence. Would you please move the clipboard because I want to be able to see your facial expressions. Thanks. When you are being reprimanded or corrected, you are required to respond. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. There is no smoking. There is no drinking. All of that is, is strictly prohibited. Christianity is very important to the Kimbrough family. We encourage every family member to foster a personal relationship with God. 
This family attends church two times per week. Your attendance is not optional. I just can't believe that people actually live like this. It's really? just it's so different from our life. But we need you to sign the copies that are before you. For their eight-day stay, Chesden and Bex's behaviour will be subject to the Kimbrough's thousand-word contract. Oh, them rules. There was four pages of rules. Four pages. And they've all got their own <laughs> title. With bullet points. <laughs> Verbal communication. They are a bit snobby. Oh, my God. They will break before we break because we are not... We are not quitters. The teens may have put pen to paper, but they're not in the habit of playing by the rules. We feel bad. It feels now. They're actually really sharp. Like they think we're really naughty and stuff. I've got no other smelly stuff. <laughs> Don't even know how to get out. <laughs> Why do we smell smoke? Our breaths. No. I've been pretty cool, calm, and collected. But you really don't want to make me angry. So it seems to me somebody's been smoking. Did you step out on the balcony? Did it blow back in? Please tell me you weren't smoking in my home. I'm not smoking. So why do we smell smoke? Well, it might be because I've opened my suitcase, because half the stuff in there is like... Oh, OK. Smoked. You sure? Well, yeah. Just so that you know, I am livid. And I believe it because I think that you're being untruthful. And I don't believe the crap for one moment that you opened your bag and that much smoke came out of your bag. And what I expect most of all is for you to be truthful. And I don't believe that you're being truthful. You did not just open your bag and the smell of smoke came out. That is a lie. So admit that it was a lie. It was a lie. Were you smoking in here? Not a balcony. That's terrible. That's disappointing. That's, that's after you clearly understood the rules. There is no smoking inside the house. Or there is no smoking outside the house. There is no smoking in America, as far as you're concerned. That is utterly disrespectful. Do you understand that as long as you are in America, under my authority, under our authority, there will be no smoking? Do you understand that? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that, Bex? Yes, ma'am. Privacy is a privilege in the Kimbrough household. Thank you. Wanda and David inspect their son's rooms regularly. It'll be no different for Chez and Bex. Chez, are you going to wait in your room? Yeah. Thank you. Being like told what's doing, like you are a child, you don't, you're not important, you don't matter, basically. And it's just like, I don't know. It, it kind of makes you feel like shit, to be honest. Okay. That's nice. The Kimbros believe that teenage girls should dress modestly. Bex doesn't. Woo! What is this? A skirt. Where's the rest of it? Why do you need a condom? Well. If you, like, go out and then you have sex. So you're sexually active? Yeah. Are you married? No. Well, we believe that sex is reserved for married people. Chesden leaves the house without permission. Your son went for a walk. You let him go for a walk by himself? He was gone before I knew it. I heard the door close and then I went. Hey, hey, Ches. Yes. I'm actually shirking. I'm not angry. I'm still glad I came, because it's experience, and I'll learn from it. But at the moment, all I've learned is that black Christians are insane. That's all I've learned. You took a trip? Yeah. You know you did that without permission? I know. That's and while you were out walking, getting it. breath, you had another smoke? Yeah, because I was You got cigarettes on you? No. How did you like the cigarette? What? You had a light on you? No. 
How did you like the cigarette? I've got matches on there. Okay, let me have one. I'm not, I'm not giving you one. You're gonna give me the matches? No. Yes, you are. I'm not. Okay, I'm not gonna ask you again. You're in my house, and we don't have matches in my house. Right, I'm, I'm not giving you my lighter matches or anything. You are gonna give me your matches. I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not, though. Okay, you, you, you wanna push me there? You wanna take me there? Yeah. You're in my house. I'm not going to give you the matches. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Okay, you want me to take them? Because I will if I have to. That's physical force, can't I do don't that. care. Yes, I can. You're in my house, and you are a child. You're a minor. In the U.S., you have to do what an adult says. You are a minor. You're not grown. And in my house, if I ask for matches, you got to give them to me. So now I'm going to give you a chance to cooperate with me. You're not in the U.K. You're in my home. Now give them up. Right, I won't put them in your house then. I'm sorry? I, I won't didn't put understand the matches that. in your house. You don't need matches in my house. Give them up. Do you really think no one's going to have a lighter in America? Yeah, there are plenty of people have lighters and matches in America. But what I expect of you is to be obedient. It is quite unbelievable that two teenagers that met 24 hours ago could band together and wreak the havoc in one home that they have managed. It feels like this is the end of the trip, and yet it's the first day. <laughs> I can't believe it. it was, oh, I'm, be, I'm actually just going to die. Day two, and it's another first for Chez and Bex. Rather than getting ready to go out partying, they're getting ready to go to church. Are those navy or black? Never. Okay, the ones you have on are better. All right. Cool. Can you come downstairs? For the Kimbros, it's essential that their new children make a good impression on the congregation. Just remember that you're representing us, and remember that our roles there were not just parishioners. We are the head. That's the pastor over there. I'm his wife. And what people think about us as the leaders and our children is very important. We're stuck in America. Oh, I'm ready for group bed. I'm so <laughs> tired. religious freaks, yeah. I think the Bible's a lot of shit. I think it's a lot of stoners that have probably just thought, oh, yeah, we'll make some money out of this. It's like Bigfoot. Well, I'm not playing with it. Bigfoot's real. <laughs> Sunday is a big day in Atlanta. There are over a thousand places of worship in the city, and many of them are Baptist churches. The Kimbros own their own church. Their services last over three hours, and they regard disrespectful behavior as an offense to God. They've never been to church, so this is going to be a great experience for them, because I think church is going to, church is going to be good. The teens' holy marathon begins with Sunday school. I'll see you guys in about 20 minutes, okay? Have you guys heard about um, children of Israel? Have you read the Bible before? Today's lesson is a detailed analysis of the book of Ezekiel. You guys know what an idol is? What? Do you know what an idol is? Like American Idol. Unknown to the teens, Wanda's office computer is linked up to the church's security cameras. You awake? You awake? Okay. Now, oh, I want to tell you, you want to pay attention because when we go upstairs, we stand in front of everybody and we review our lesson. So, everybody says one thing about the lesson, and, um... It's really so unbelievable, and the whispering, the whispering that they're doing is kind of driving me insane. Spiritually, basically, they, since they have been doing what they... It's like I feel like they're plotting. What's going on? You have a question? No, I'm just bored. Can you guide me? Oh, okay. You want to come sit right here? Can we go upstairs, please? We need some fresh air. No, not yet. We almost done. All right, we got about 10 more minutes, okay? Can <laughs> you go now? Grab it. You can grab that chair. School down, okay. Armand. Jeffrey? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Chad, where are you going? Uh oh. Chad? No. Chad. So, so just... <laughs> <laughs> 
run, 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 run. Up down the hill, up the hill. In the, in the trees, in the trees. Oh. All this god shit. We're prisoners. <laughs> Can't believe I'm still in the fucking forest in the rain, trying to have a fight with a Bible on my head. It's ridiculous. I have no appreciation for spending my Sunday morning, a Sunday morning of worship. I have absolutely no appreciation for spending my Sunday morning chasing two disorderly, disruptive teenagers in the rain. Absolutely no appreciation for that. None. By running out of church, the teens have offended everything the Kimbros hold dear. No, oh my God, right. You disobeyed my order. I took you to the classroom and that's where I expected you to stay. It is boring. I don't care if it's boring. You don't get to choose what you do. Well, we did, didn't we? We just couldn't take any longer, so we need to go out. Take it any longer, you were only there for five minutes. Is there a mirror? My hair's a mask. You don't get a mirror. You chose to go set out in the rain so whatever fool you look like, that's what you're going to look like to the people that meet you for the first time. I don't like a fellow, I just don't look as good. Okay, well, you don't look <laughs> as good, you're right. <laughs> I'm just going to bored and fed up. This is just so shit. It's actually quite cool fear, isn't it? Look at me. Don't use profanity in this sanctuary. Every place in this building, sit up. Take your arm down and sit up. No. Take, you will. No, I won't. You will. No, I won't. You will not use profanity in this building. <laughs> you will not. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Guilt is always an indication that God is working on the inside of you. Guilt comes as a result for you to look at your ways and evaluate whether you are doing the right thing or not. Chaz and Bex are made to sit through the remaining two hours of the service. Sin is sin, wrong is wrong, ain't no big sin and no little sin, all sin is sin. It's all about the evils of drinking, smoking and sex outside marriage. For Chesden, it's a foreign language. Like, I can't change being gay, can't change who I am. Plus, I think the temptation of sex and drinking is just too much, really. They're very sheltered, like, and they don't understand. I literally doubt half of the people in there have ever been laid. The Kimbros treat Chesden and Bex to lunch in a restaurant. Great. Great. Lord, we thank you for this food we're about to receive. We pray you bless it and allow it to be nourishment for these wonderful bodies you've given us. Into it's an opportunity to find out more about the teens' lives back in Britain. Do you have a boyfriend? No. I went out of a boy for two years, and then we split up two years ago. For two years? When did you start dating? <laughs> I was 13. 13? Yeah. <laughs> Like, when I bring guys home, and I asked her, like, why she didn't ever talk to them proper, she said it's because uh, she knows I don't keep them. So at 16, you have open gay relationships? No, not open. Like, I don't, I don't cheat on people or anything like that. No, she mean no, I mean, no, not... Other people know about it. I mean, it's not, not a private not thing. Not like a secret. No, in no, the kind of thing. It's just right out, right out, in the open, period. And your family, everyone's okay with that? Your mom? Yeah. I'm just in shock that you're so carefree about it. Usually a person's <laughs> sexual experiences, especially when they're not married, they're usually private. You know, the teenagers here, if they're sexually active and things like that, they're trying to keep it private. They're not, you know, on for God and everybody to see and hear. This has been a really good dinner. I know it. Oh, I bet it has. <laughs> been a real good discussion. We still have all of our food yeah. in front of us. We lost our appetites. If we'd have told them, like, how many people would oh, start with, God. like, at oh, what age, oh, they would have actually God. just died. Oh, and, like, I think they can, can you imagine? We should try like, that, because then maybe they have, like, a panic attack or something. I think they've become a lot more comfortable with sharing their feelings and their opinions. and. If we're going to make an impact on them, I think we have to first connect with them. My guard is up. <laughs> I, I am not as, I guess, optimistic as David is because I, I feel as though they've said great things to my face and they smile and it's yes, ma'am, and they're just so sweet. 
it's almost like they're bipolar or split personalities or Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. H Mr. Hyde. Tomorrow, there'll be another challenge. Chesden and Bex will be going to school. They pretend school is going to be different. It's going to be disastrous. I can feel it in my bones. I mean, every time she says, are we going to school? I just think the embarrassment is going to be so great, it's going to be headline news. Yeah. Upstairs, Chesden and Bex are preparing for school by packing a secret stash of cigarettes. <laughs> The Kimbros have insisted that the British teens follow their new school's uniform regulations. You tuck your way in. <laughs> oh, look, I've just got a bed and I'll set this in the The Kimbros run a primary school together. David is the head, Wanda is the administrator. Education is very important to my husband, very important to me. We really feel, though, as though that if a person doesn't have a great education, then their quality of life is compromised. The British teens aren't the most promising of pupils. Before Bex dropped out of college, she was on the point of being thrown out. And Chesden has had several formal warnings from his teachers. Hi, guys. Good I'm morning. I'm Patrice. Hi, I'm David Kimber. OK. Wanda Kimbro. All right, mommy and daddy. Mommy and daddy. Bex Kimbro. Bex Kimbro. I'm Chaz. Okay, Chaz. Guys, collars have to be buttoned appropriately. Not a fashion show, so. I just really need you to express to their teachers what our expectations are. Okay. We have zero tolerance for so our you. children misbehaving in class. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Yes, Tell them bye. 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 Yeah. <laughs> have a good one. Have a blessed day. Thank, Thank you. you. It costs over £6,000 a year to study at the Southwest Atlanta Christian Academy. They have a 100% success rate at getting their pupils into university and they pride themselves on their hands-on approach to science. You all are going to be joining a biology lab today. Uh, this is a the first lesson is on animal anatomy, and the British teens class. are in for a bit of a shock. Oh, my God. The pupils work in pairs to dissect unborn pigs. <laughs> this little piggy went to the market. <laughs> Bex objects. I don't like it. It's like, that's a baby pig, yeah, obviously. And you're saying it's already dead, but that's just like, if one of you lot had, like, obviously only the girls had a miscarriage, oh, the baby's already dead, let's just open it up and like, see what we can find. I just don't agree with it. Bex has had enough. Yeah, sorry. But her escape route is blocked by lead teacher, Sister Patrice. Chase? You can't go in the boys' bathroom. Anthony! Exactly. Why did you walk out of class? Because oh, it was too much for me. Why? I was acting a pig. And I felt ill. And I needed some fresh air. Were you? Did you ask your instructor for fresh air? Right. We don't was, walk out of class. Well, I was going to be sick, so I'd rather be sick outside than be sick in the classroom at the end of the day. Can you let go of my arm, please? Let go of my arm. Young lady, let me make something absolutely clear to you. You are in our environment. Yeah. That means you must submit to the rules. What, so you want me to be sick in the classroom? No, ask the teacher to be excused. Whatever. If you need to be excused, ask your instructor. Okay, it's a guy. But I'm going to film with my mouth. Okay. She feels a little nauseous, but she didn't ask your permission. She needs to ask permission before she walks out of the class. OK. We're fair. Do you understand me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And don't switch your neck at me. You're messing with the wrong one. What are you going to do? What would I do? What would you do? Well, I'd knock you out, but obviously I can't. Uh, no, you absolutely cannot. Obviously. Stop drinking while I'm talking to you. No. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, my Let's go. Don't touch me. You better get out of here. Don't pinch me. Let's go. Oh, stop talking. Oh. Do you absolutely think that I'm going to allow you to disrupt my class? Wait in your car, then keep pinching me. Oh, I will pinch you. No, Don't you don't have to pinch me. Who the hell do you think you are? I am Sister Patrice, and you are not stepping this entire environment and ruining it. Well, get you the right to pinch me. 
Well, well, I, can't, I can't be dealing with dissecting pigs at the end of the day. Well, that's absolutely fine, but how do you I'll, expect I'll, to be I'll, a doctor without learning how to dissect I don't want to be a bloody doctor. Oh, really? Yes. Who said that? Me? Watch I don't want to be a doctor. It. You don't know what you're going to be yet. Well, no, I don't want to be a that. doctor. How do you know? Because I think I'd know if I want to be a doctor. I'm oh, 17. Okay. If you're going to succeed, you're going to have to push through what's uncomfortable. I said, all you had to do was speak with your instructor. He's very fair. You understand me? Yeah. But I just have strong feelings about like the pig and everything, and I know I could have asked the teacher to go out and get some fresh air, but I felt so, like, you know, when you just you just get so much, and like, it gets so, like, where you've been, where this is, like, a new experience as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like, coming here from England, and then, thank you, and then, like, you come here, and then, you like, there's a pig on the table, and it's just, I just wanted to get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. But you don't have to run out. That's what little children do. You're 17. I don't expect you to act like a little child. So understand, you cannot throw a temper tantrum like a two-year-old, lay out on the floor, and expect to be respected. It's not like that, sweetheart. Let's learn how to be a big girl, because at 17, you want to be considered a big girl, but you don't want to act like one. I'm not a big girl. Yes, you are. Me. Yes, you are. Back in Britain, none of Bex's teachers were able to persuade her to remain in college. Let's get started. Let's stand up. Let's pray. Put your books away. Let's go. Sister Patrice asked the pupils to deliver a short speech on the subject of greatness. I am great because I think I am. Validity comes with self-knowledge and self-reassurance. Therefore, in knowing my worth, my greatness shines through automatically. I am great because I have the courage and strength to be my own person Stand out from the crowd and grow into a confident man. No, no, no. no. Do I have to read it? Yeah, sure. If it's well long. It's not that long. Right. Greatness has been pronounced over me because I was given an opportunity to start having respect for others and myself and also to start believing in myself and gradually it is working. For example, in England, I do what I want when I want, like I'm addicted to horse tranquilizer. <laughs> 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 Bex used to be a model student. Her behaviour changed four years ago after a family tragedy. My brother died like two and a half weeks before my 13th birthday and he was severely disabled but we did get on, like I loved him to pieces. Bex was always very close to Jay's. Bex was there when Jay's died and then after Jay's died she just turned into the teenager from hell. Bex's relationship with her mum has never recovered. I think my mum hates me and she envies me because she does always say she wished it was me that died instead of Jamie. Bex has been away from her parents for four days. Time enough for her mum and dad to put their regrets in writing. We want to both apologise once again from the bottom of our hearts for what we both said regarding, regarding you dying instead of Jamie. It was a horrible thing to say and we are disgusted and embarrassed and totally ashamed by the outburst. You have been abusing your body with sex, drugs and alcohol, your own choice of which we see as a kick in the teeth. Jamie on the other hand didn't get a choice. He was born with cerebral palsy. You have no disability, so why abuse your body? I'm sorry, but I think that's my shittiest letter ever. I'm what? pissed off because she just, she just wound me up. I'm sorry, but... Oh. She's a dickhead, I'm sorry. She could have been like, hello darling, hope you're having a good time. We miss you loads, can't wait to have you back. And made me feel nice and I, like, I want to go home. But instead, I might as well just stay here. The British teens have been staying in one of the most comfortable areas of Atlanta. But Wanda and David's childhoods were anything but comfortable. And like Bex, Wanda suffered bereavement at an early age. One of the things that drives me is growing up without parents. My father was brutally murdered when I was three. My mom died 18 months later, so I went to live with a grandmother who was already a senior citizen. So she provided for me and did a great job, but just that, that void was always there to have that mom to take me here or that dad to take me there. I thank the God for a limit. I thank him that I can't eat all I want when I want. David's father fell gravely ill when he was young and the stress of caring for him and bringing up ten children contributed to his mother's early death. As a result, 
David's now passionate about being a good dad. When it comes to parenting, I don't think there is a failure, um, except the failure to do all you should have done. And so with these uh, British teenagers, we're going to do everything we can, and we're going to treat them just like they're our kids. It's just a few days. That's all we need is a few days. Chesden has never known his father. He's close to his mother, but she's in poor health. It's like she had an heart attack, which wasn't my fault. I don't want to sit at home looking after my sick mum. The Kimbros called Chesden's mother to find out just how much he does to look after her. Are you saying that the only job Chesden does at home is washing up the dishes and you pay him to do that, but he doesn't do anything else? No, no. Here I teach my sons that if there is a lady in the home, she is to be treated like a queen and we serve her. The Kimbros decide to teach Chesden a lesson about chores. Well, we're gonna let, we're gonna let you do some chores under your dad's authority. It's not my dad how many times. Under no, it's dad. like you're trying to annoy me. You're trying to wind me up and you're being smarmy about hey, saying it hey, as well. Hey, do me a favor. Stop Again, saying. no, no. No, that is winding me up. Don't take me off. That okay, is you're, me you're not gonna you're sit not at the my table. Dad. You're not gonna sit at you my table my and dad. talk to her like that. You are not my dad. I don't care if I'm your dad. I'm not trying to be your dad. I'm being an adult that's supervising you. I don't want you to be referred to hey, as I my dad. Hey, I don't care what you want at this point. You don't respect me, I don't respect you. You get nothing. I don't have to talk to I you in a soft, go loving tongue. I don't care what you want right now. And you ought to figure that out. So you can go up to your room. Are you, Chaz? I'm going to calm off once that. You're going where? I'm going to calm off. Chaz. Just fuck off. This just shows you his level of immaturity. Yeah. Because this is not what a family unit is about. You don't just walk out and throw that person to the dog because now they've pissed you off. Right. He talks all day about what's wrong with us, but never really talks about what's wrong with him. He's never had anybody, I don't think, to get in his face like you've done. And he is going to have a very hard time regrouping. What do you think about that, that exchange? It's crazy. <laughs> what was crazy about it? I mean, all they have to do is sit here and listen. Instead, they kept on talking back and stuff, and then just throw them out like that. Yeah. I'm pale and shaking. I know, I see you shaking. When you're it's... in someone's face, or that's seen as threatening behavior, and it's like, I'm not a violent person, but I was scared. That was, I mean, there's no way I could win against him. I mean, he's a really tall, big black guy, but it's like, I was scared that I was going to do something stupid and lash out, and it had just ruined the whole exp experience mm. like so. It's well over an hour before Chesden is calm enough to return to the Kimbros. Hello? Hi. You walked out that door. You didn't ask for permission. You showed your immaturity that I'm a child, and I can throw a tip and tantrum, and when I get angry, I can just walk off. That's what children do. But you cross that threshold, it requires respect. Respect for my rule, you're in my home. And so if you want to stay here tonight and sleep tonight, you owe me, you owe Mrs. Kimbrough an apology, both of you. You don't have to agree with me, and I'm not asking you to, but you got to respect me. Ain't but one head in this house, and that's me. You can't abide by that, then we're done. Yeah, just, just, Mr. Yeah. David Kimbrough is the authority of this house. He has the final word. The teen's signature does not necessarily express his or her agreement with the terms of this contract, but unequivocally denotes the teen's understanding of the rules and the consequences herein. So again, if you're going to sleep here tonight, you're going to apologize for your actions. Sorry for being disrespectful. I accept your apology. Welcome home. Can I please go to the loo? Yes, you may go Thank to the loo. I'm sorry for raising my voice and being rude in your house. The apology is accepted. Welcome home. Thank you. I'm just not used to confrontation and I've never had like a dad and so I've never had like a male presence like shouting in my face. <laughs> 
As day five dawns, it appears that David's words have got through to Chesden. He gets up early and completes all his household chores without complaint. Chesden's obedient behaviour continues at school. Bex isn't quite so obedient. Facebook is not on the computer studies curriculum. Get off me. You do not do that. You know better. And you already know that. Come here, let me talk to you. Back home, Bex has given up on her education, but Sister Patrice has not given up on her. I need a fag and I'm going for one. I am, I'm sorry, I'm going for one. I don't care anymore. We don't allow smoking on campus. We don't allow students to smoke. So she's leaving campus in order to try to do what she'd like to do. It's very unfortunate for her. She's just uh, continuing to destroy herself. Why are you determined to hurt yourself? I'm not determined to hurt myself. Yes, you are. Just need a fag. No, sweetheart, you're killing yourself. This is killing me. I know it's hurting your feelings, but that's different. So why are you determined to destroy yourself? Time to yes, you are, sweetheart. You're 17 years old. You know how you're living? You're living like a person that's been out of life for quite some time. You're more worried about me, like, and how my life's going, and then, like, the family's just worried about rules and stuff. Now, listen, there is a concept, whether you believe it or not, that exists called mercy. But you have got to think about the repercussions of your actions. And you're not doing that. OK, so you weren't born into this family here at Southwest Atlanta Christian Academy, but we've already accepted you. With all of your craziness and everything, do you realize that if a student smokes here, they are kicked out of school automatically? They don't have a second chance. So if you are given mercy, you've got to show your family mercy. Whether you agree or not is not important. You're still a child by law. We're trying to show you how to be a better person. Lead us not to temptation, but lead us to evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Bex finds a new enthusiasm for school. Ha, <laughs> none of you can get the ball off me. <laughs> She's a sweet child. She really is. It's inside of her, but she doesn't necessarily see that part of her all the time. And quite often, because people might expect negativity, she gives what they expect. When you don't expect negativity, it's amazing how positivity can reign. Chesden's second day at school has been an extremely positive experience. He's applied himself, stayed out of trouble, and won plenty of friends. He's really funny, and he's been keeping me laughing since he's gotten here. So I kind of don't want him to leave. You gave it a chance. And that's all we ask this morning, is that you give it a chance, not throw in the towel, you know, not be rude, be disobedient, just give it a chance. And you did, and that's really, really great. I am so proud of Thank you. Thank you. So that. proud of you. Today we went to school, and everyone's just really, really respectful. And I know it sounds so sad, but unless you've come here and experienced it for yourself, you don't know what it's like. And it's like, you, you can just feel the love, you know what I mean? Tonight, Sister Patrice has set some homework to compose a poem about invisibility. The Kimbrough's house rules require all grades to be B plus or higher, so Wanda asks to read Bex's poem before it's submitted. This oh, is. this is your poem? Yeah. Wow. No, because it's rubbish. <laughs> oh, don't start out by saying it's rubbish. I put on a mask. The fake Bex, but the true Bex is still here. I'm just hiding. Devil Bex came about four years ago, and she hasn't gone away. I'm scared that the true Bex is not only gone invisible, but is going to disappear forever. I didn't expect that. <sighs> wow. Oh, whoo. Pretty powerful, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think you realize what you wrote. And I know that I do wrong, and some something's there saying you shouldn't do this. And I really, I see the effects I have on people. Is that you really do care? 
you care about life, you care about people. And, and I really believe that you mean that when you say, I'm, I'm only concerned about today, I'm just leaving for today, I just wanna have a good time. But I'm also very excited to know that somewhere deep in your conscience, you know that it's something greater than that. And that is so very hopeful to me. That is, that's brilliant. <sighs> Got issues, and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Bex is starting to rethink her life back home. Now I can say I'm like a daughter from hell. I, I was like such a cow. I like no respect whatsoever. Done what I want when I play. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, everything was about me, and I didn't take into like account other people's feelings. That's more than I could have ever asked for. And I fought those tears with everything. I mean, I literally felt my, my guts shaking because I didn't want to get that emotional, but it was very overwhelming to me because I feel as though in, in some big way that we have made an impact in just this short period of time. Now she's starting her sixth day with the Kimbros. Obeying the rules is becoming second nature to Bex. I'm very, very impressed. Thank you so much for getting up this morning and walking in obedience. I really appreciate that. Sister Patrice calls Wonder into the school for a meeting about the homework. We had a chance to grade them, and I wanted to let you know that both of them received an A on their points. That is terrific. OK. I just finished talking to Sister Patrice about school about homework, she was ecstatic about your points. But what you don't know is that you both got an A on those points. Me, I got an A, that's my first A I've ever even got in my life. That is spectacular. So I was really, I was really proud. I know that is fantastic. One, two. To make them be proud of me makes me feel happy. Just being here, like going to school and hearing that they want to be like lawyers and stuff, it's like, wow. Whereas me, fell into the wrong crowd. And then just my goal, just like my dreams went out the window. After six full days on the Kimbrough's private estate, David and Wanda decide to give the British teens a change of scene. It's an opportunity for David to reveal that, like Chesden, his childhood was blighted by parental illness. We have an old saying here in the United States that you don't miss the well until the water runs dry. Yeah. You become so complacent, and you're so used to going to that well every day and getting water out of it and drinking it and refreshing yourself that you don't take time to appreciate it. You don't even take time to thank God for the well. And I think a lot of times we do our parents that way. We, we overlook the sacrifices and all the things they're doing for us. No, I think we just need to find the right balance because it's like my mum does so much for me and it's like I don't do hardly anything, you know. Now, now I think about it, it's like it's nothing compared to what she does for me. Yeah. If you don't go back home and change and become the Chesden, Chesden that she has raised and been trying to strategically place on the right road, you will look back on your life when she's gone and say, I wish I had done more for mom. And that feeling will torment you beyond anything you can imagine. When you get home, man, you should treat your mom like the queen she is. Wanda decides to open up to Bex about her own childhood. By the time I was five and I started kindergarten, both my parents were already deceased. So any relationship that can be salvaged, especially between a mom and a daughter, it's really important to me, really important to me. There are days that I just want a hug or to hold my mom's hand. My teenage years, I mean, I've gone through my entire life with this huge void in my heart. You have your mom and I don't want you to, I don't want you to throw that away. You've had probably the nice worst life I've known. Like anybody I know, like the worst one. 
and yet you still smile every day. And you're just such an inspiration to me. I made a choice. I made a choice that I wasn't gonna allow all the things that I felt were so unfair to me in life make me be a terrible person. And I feel like if anybody has excuses, I have legitimate excuses, <laughs> but I've chosen to throw them all on the ground, jump up and down on them and say, you know what? No excuse is good enough. None. So you don't have any excuses. <laughs> Do you have a desire to give up drugs? I'm done not touching drugs. You're not going to touch them anymore? No. Wow. The drugs just mess your life up so much. I'm stronger than that, and I don't, I know I don't need drugs. Thank you so much. How did your chat with Wondergo then? Like, I cannot believe some of the stuff that she's gone through that is just unreal. And for her to still, I said to her, still smile every day. You know, like, this is so strong about God and Christiana, yeah? Yeah. But I think that, you know, I know they're excessive with it, but I think it's a good thing, because if she didn't have God, could you imagine yeah. what she'd be like? I honestly do look up to her in so many ways. She's just so lovely. Yeah. And, yeah, she hasn't had a mum, and she said just... She just wanted one to, like, hold her hand. It's like, I've got my mum, and I don't appreciate her at all. And now I will. Bex and Chess's time with the Kimbros is almost at an end. But it's not quite over yet. <laughs> the Kimbros have invited the entire church congregation to a surprise party in honour of Chess and Bex. I'm going to go home and I think things are just going to be a lot better with my mum. I think I've learnt to be a lot more respectful of Jesus. He seems all right. I might look him up when I get back in England. <laughs> Do you reckon he's in yellow pages? We worship you. Thank you. It has been an amazing honor to parent Chesden. I was very skeptical about having an openly gay 16-year-old in my home. But I understand now that that was mainly because of my ignorance and because of my fears. <laughs> Be blessed. Thank you, for Bex, I really hope that in sharing my personal life struggles with her, that in her quiet moments, that she really thinks about some of the things that I've told her. Gonna sort my life out and like make an effort with my mum, because I realise that mums are really important and I shouldn't disrespect her. And I'm gonna have respect for myself, so I'm not gonna like do the drugs anymore. She don't need them, because I've had fun without them and then just get my life on track and start again. Just I love you. Love you up. I love you too. The teens now have the chance to make a new start back home. It has changed, but I should be doing a lot more compared to what you do for me. I'm going to start doing more stuff around the house for you. Start looking after you. Oh. <laughs> the way things were before, uh, I think I'd have been in an early grave with him. <laughs> I can see the change, a big change. Fingers crossed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> have we left the horrible Bex behind? Yeah. Yeah, got rid of her in the Atlantic. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good.